positively identified by Memphis police. What you're seeing right here this morning uh, is uh, we're standing by waiting for the newly elected Shelby County DA, Steve Mulroy. He was actually sworn in on Wednesday. This really the first major thing that he's had to deal with as the district attorney in Shelby County. We're waiting for him to speak this morning following the discovery or really the positive identity uh, identification of missing 34 year old Eliza Fletcher uh, found in Memphis not too far from where the car was found that belonged to Cleotha Abston the man arrested and now charged with first degree murder and first degree murder in perpetration of kidnapping I want to show you earlier this morning Abstin's court appearance. This was simply, he was already arrested in, in connection to this case, but this was his first course appear, court appearance this morning, really only on kidnapping and tampering with evidence charges. It was right before he we, went into the courtroom uh, that those first degree murder and perpetration of kidnapping, uh, premeditated murder as well charges started to come down. So right now he's still on that $500,000 bond, but will remain behind bars tonight, most likely. The judge saying that the, uh, the prosecutors needed to present a written uh, no-bond affidavit, if you will, present something in writing to him as opposed to just saying, hey, these charges are coming down the pipe. Uh, he needs to have that assigned to him. So kind of just a lot of legal things happening with that and how that will get changed to no-bond being declared. That hearing will happen at 10 o'clock Eastern time from Memphis tomorrow morning. That's where he will stand before a judge on these new charges of first degree murder, first degree murder and perpetration of kidnapping and premeditated murder. Eliza Fletcher was last seen on Friday, Friday morning jogging near the University of Memphis where surveillance video caught Cleotha Abston putting her in his car. They located that car not too long later. They found the body. Uh, over the weekend, that body this morning positively identified as that of 34-year-old mother, daughter, sister, friend, Eliza Fletcher, found and identified positively by Memphis police, by Memphis police. Of note, with Cleotha Abstin, there is the truth in sentencing law that is now active in the state of Tennessee. That means he would have to serve 100% of his time that is given for a lot of times they'll say you get 50 years you only have to serve three quarters of that or a certain amount you can hear them testing behind us here uh, getting ready for the Shelby County DA Steve Mulroy to come out but once again new charges will be heard tomorrow 9 a.m. Central Time 10 o'clock Eastern Time from Shelby County from Memphis Tennessee for Cleotha Abstin where those new charges first degree murder First degree murder and perpetration of kidnapping and premeditated murder will be heard. A lot of people were a little confused this morning uh, watching Cleotha Abstin's first court appearance that happened uh, just about an hour ago from Shelby County. That was solely on the kidnapping and tampering with evidence charges that he'd already been given. It had nothing to do with any of the murder charges. Those were filed too late. He was uh, charged with that too late for that to be put into that court. That kind of needs to go through the court clerk's office and then assigned to a judge. That's what the judge was hinting at, was saying, that has not been assigned to me. I'm not going to go ahead and revoke bond or do anything like that if there's not an official paperwork on file with the law clerk, with the judicial uh, office down there in Shelby County, uh, Memphis, Tennessee. So that's what will happen tomorrow morning when we hear more about that and what can be done. Here's another live look as we wait in front of uh, the Justice Center there and the uh, wait to hear from the district attorney speak. Once again, Eliza Fletcher's body positively identified by Memphis police. She went missing on Friday. There has been a massive massive hunt to try to find her over the past couple of days. Cleotha Abstin not giving authorities any sense as to where she would, would be. They ended up finding that body uh, while scouring the area around where that car was located one, two, three, that was one, two, three, seen four, five, in that surveillance six. video. That first court appearance earlier today still being held on a $500,000 bond. Uh, as we get back to Shelby County, where we uh, want to listen in, where we're going to hear from a couple Memphis officials, Shelby County officials, and the newly elected Shelby County DA, Steve Mulroy. We'll let you listen in.
think we're ready. Good morning. Today is a very sad day in the city of Memphis. First, I'd like to express our sincere condolences to the family, friends, and numerous others who have been impacted by the tragic and heinous kidnapping of Eliza Fletcher. Yesterday evening, September 5th, at approximately 5.07 p.m., the Memphis Police Department and other law enforcement partners discovered the remains of a body, a human body, in the rear of a vacant duplex apartment at the 1600 block of Victor Street. At that time, it was believed the unidentified body could possibly be the remains of kidnapping victim Eliza Fletcher. Further forensic investigation by the MPD traffic unit positively identified the body was, in fact, Eliza Fletcher. This finding marked the culmination of a four-day intensive investigation incorporating a robust search and rescue effort and the timely arrest of suspect Cleotha Abstin on September 3rd, the day following the kidnapping. Cleotha Abstin has been charged by MPD homicide investigators with the following state charges. First degree murder, first degree murder and perpetration of kidnapping, especially aggravated kidnapping and tampering with evidence. In addition, Abstin has been charged with the following unrelated offenses. Identity theft, theft of property, and credit card fraud. While the outcome of this investigation is not what we hoped for, we are nonetheless pleased to remove this dangerous predator off the streets of Memphis. I'd like to personally thank the professional and highly skilled men and women of the Memphis Homicide Unit, the Memphis Police Department, the FBI, the U.S. Marshals, the Tennessee Bureau of Investigations, the Shelby County Sheriff's Office, the District Attorney General's Office, Homeland Security, the ATF, and the University of Memphis Police Department for your relentless efforts and many contributions toward this investigation. The collaboration and cooperation amongst all of our partner agencies was nothing less than symphonic. We are also very grateful for the hundreds of tips that came through our Crime Stoppers and other platforms from our citizens at large. Our engaged and supportive community is truly our most valued asset. Just remember that this still is an ongoing investigation. At this time, I would like to bring up FBI Special Agent in Charge, Doug Korneski. Thank you. Good morning. <clears throat> First and foremost, on behalf of the FBI, uh, I want to extend the extreme sympathy and condolences of our office to the family and friends of Eliza. Uh, while most of us did not know her prior to this tragedy, uh, through the course of the recent investigation, we got a small glimmer into the light that she was to her family and friends and community. Next, I just want to commend the immense collaborative efforts of the local, state, and federal law enforcement during this investigation. As the family knows, um, every possible resource that we had as a law enforcement community, to include the FBI, was brought to bear to both find Eliza and her perpetrator and hold him accountable. And then simply lastly, I just want to thank the community for their support during this investigation, the many tips and leads that we received. We are a member of this community as well, and this, this situation, this tragedy impacts us deeply as well. Um, so with that, I just again want to thank the community. Next, I'll be followed by the Acting Assistant Special Agents in Charge, Ali Roberts from ATF. First, on behalf of ATF, I'd like to extend our deepest condolences to the family and friends affected by this tragedy. Uh, no resources were spared to locate and arrest the individual responsible for this incomprehensible violent crime. 
ATF utilized resources such as assigning special agents, our canine, and utilizing the E-Trace database. Uh, we also utilize our expertise as we work with our state and local partners to bring about justice to the family and, and friends in reference to this uh, tragedy. I would like to bring next up uh, U.S. Marshal Tyrese Miller. Thank you. Good afternoon. On behalf of the United States Marshal Service, we certainly want to extend our sincere condolences to the family of Eliza Fletcher, her friends and family, and, and those that, that knew her. Uh, as I understand it, uh, she, she touched many lives, and it's certainly a, a, a loss. As I've said on numerous occasions, the, the Marshal Service has a very uh, unique uh, relationship with the Memphis Police Department. Uh, at, at any time they call, we're there to assist. We were glad to receive that call on Saturday when a suspect had been identified. Uh, we then went about uh, finding the suspect vehicle in question as well as the suspect himself. Uh, he was spotted, the vehicle was spotted at the apartment complex and we also conducted surveillance on him. And then when he uh, tried to make a move, uh, we went in and, and made the arrest safely uh, and took him into custody and turned him over to the custody of the Memphis Police Department. And after that, uh, we also participated in the search efforts to find Ms. Fletcher all day Sunday and all day Monday. And uh, as, as has been stated, uh, it was not the uh, outcome we were looking for. Um, we were dedicated and committed to continue those search efforts and assist our partners until she was found. Next, I will turn it over to uh, District Attorney General Steve Moore. Thank you. Good morning. I also want to add my condolences and the condolences of my office to the family of Liza Fletcher. To lose someone so young and so vital is a tragedy in and of itself, but to have it happen in this way with a senseless act of violence, it's unimaginable. And uh, we express our deepest condolences. We're praying for them. I'm praying for Liza and I'm praying for the family. Uh, with respect to the family, both law enforcement and our office was in contact with the family throughout this long weekend. Uh, they have been fully cooperative throughout that entire process and in contrast to whatever baseless speculation you might have uh, seen, we have no reason to think this was anything other than an isolated uh, attack by a stranger. Uh, with respect to the family, uh, we were in touch with them, as I said, throughout the course of the weekend. Um, I visited with the family personally over the weekend. Um, I also visited them this morning when uh, we had terrible news to, uh, to deliver to them. And I have a message from the family that I want to express to all of you, the public, but also the media. Please respect their privacy. Please allow them to grieve. Um, at an appropriate time, they will be making uh, a statement. I believe a written statement will be forthcoming, but we really do ask that you uh, uh, avoid intrusive questioning and uh, respect their uh, privacy. I also want to take this opportunity to commend all of law enforcement, the people behind uh, me and all the agencies they recommend, uh, they uh, represent. I had the opportunity to go to the command center over the course of the weekend, and I saw with my own eyes the seamless cooperation among all of them. Uh, Chief Davis referred to it a moment ago as symphonic. I think that's an entirely appropriate adjective. I, I watched myself how they cooperated, and I was very impressed with the, the speed with which they uh, developed uh, leads, the speed with which they turned around uh, test results, um, the diligence with which they coordinated the, the search efforts. They're all to be commended. Uh, as for our office, uh, the defendant was arraigned this morning on charges of kidnapping and tampering with evidence. He'll be arraigned tomorrow morning on new charges that we now have to bring um, of uh, first-degree murder, premeditated murder, murder in the course of uh, perpetration of a kidnapping. Um, any kind of violence, of course, is uh, unacceptable, but repeat violent offenders particularly deserve a strong response, and that's what they'll get from this district attorney's office. Um, we will continue to cooperate with law enforcement and work closely with them as we already have. 
so that um, we can do our best to, um, to bring justice to this tragic situation. And I'll uh, end there. I'll note that because this is still an ongoing investigation and a pending case, uh, and I as a prosecutor have certain legal limits on what I can say, there are probably limits to what kind of questions that I can answer or that can be answered by anybody, um, but I'll, uh, I'll just end there. Thank you. Uh, this question is for anyone in law enforcement. Do you know a manner of death, A and B, was she killed in the vehicle? It's too early for us to determine place and method of, of, of death at this point. Chief, can you the, describe? The, the, the suspect initially, according to the affidavit, was not being cooperative with authorities. Did the suspect ultimately help you find his victim? At this time, I can't respond. Uh, we are still working with that suspect. Uh, but at this time, we have not gotten very much information from that individual. Can you describe how Ms. Fletcher ended up? Or involved? Say that again. May anyone else be charged or involved? It's still early on. We're still uncovering various leads. This is an ongoing investigation. That's a possibility. But at this time, no one else has been charged. Chief, can you describe how Ms. Fletcher ended up in the vacant duplex? We, we really don't know at this particular time. We uh, worked together to identify various locations, and that was our search concentration. And we were, were just blessed that we were able to identify this location, and our officers were successful in, in finding her. So it was a part of the search. That's it. Thank all right, thank you all for the questions. Uh, that's all the information that we have right now. You can send them to the PIO's office if you have any additional questions, and we'll address them there. Thank you. 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 Thank you.